My name is Tariq Zabuza. I'm 20 years old and I grew up in Nashville, New Hampshire. I grew up with my mother and my two brothers and a sister. One older brother, one older sister, and one younger brother. I was about 13 when I started getting in trouble. My mom was really focused on trying to keep us out of like poverty or whatever, you know, like, because it was just us. I got diagnosed when I was really young, like seven years old, with bipolar, like anxiety, anger, and all that stuff. I started taking medication. I was really, really angry. I had to go to a mental hospital when I was seven years old, man. We had a boys and girls club, and that was cool growing up. It was a, um, a big influence on a lot of the things that we were doing as kids. But that boys club, like, became uncool at a certain point, you know, around, like, 13 years old. And we had, a, like, a little group of friends, probably, like, four or five of us. And, uh, you know, then we start, like, drinking alcohol. And I don't know, man, I guess uh, my family has, I have, a, like, strain of alcoholics in my family. You know, I'm in, I'm in school in seventh grade, at, drunk in class. I mean, if you're 11 years old and you're drunk, it's a problem already, you know what I mean? I don't know how the teachers didn't really know. I mean, but you can't so much be focused on one kid when you have 30 of them in front of you and know that this kid is coming in drunk unless he's acting out. I was like, I'll sleep during class because I'm drunk or just stay quiet. But when I hit the hallway, that's when I'll be drunk and I'll, you know, roam around grabbing butts and starting fights and stuff like that. I've never been in trouble sober before in my life. I've never been arrested sober before, ever. Anytime I ever got in trouble, I was drunk. You suspend me from school, I'm gonna just do whatever I want. All right, mom, I'm sorry. But then she'd go to work the next day and I don't have to go to school. My little brother's off to school. My older brother's off to school. I'd sleep in, I get to sleep in, man. I get to watch cartoons. Whatever, man, you know, go play basketball. A lot of other kids are in school, but there's somebody else who's suspended or somebody else who's skipping school. And if somebody's not skipping school, I get somebody to skip school to hang out with me, you know? And um, I get a girl to skip school with me so we could have sex, whatever. In middle school, I started getting arrested and I'd get arrested maybe once a month, sometimes twice in a week. And every time I'm arrested, it's for the same exact thing. Possession of alcohol and resisting arrest. I'm resisting because I have alcohol, I know I have alcohol, and I don't want to get caught with this alcohol. So I'm running and I'm wasted, man. I mean, I was arrested probably like 11 times between eighth grade and ninth grade for possession of alcohol, resisting arrest, uh, internal possession of alcohol, um, going to school drunk, I ended up going to a placement in ninth grade. You go to these places and it's like just a little school that you can't leave. Same kids, you know what I mean? We're all bad kids, whatever. So now who can be the baddest? Even as kids, you know what you're doing is wrong. But it's like the risk of losing that reputation, I'd rather risk going to jail at that, at that time. I mean, I went freshman year, zero credits. Sophomore year, maybe a credit and a half, you know what I mean? So I went to guidance, I told, I said, listen, I'm not coming to school if I'm not graduating. I'm not coming to school just to come to school, man. I wanna drop out of high school today. And uh, she, she helped me out. That woman, I don't remember her name, but she was like, wait a minute, like pause. Let's not like just jump there first. She said, let me see if I can find a way to get you like an alternative learning plan so you can graduate. And if I do that, will you, do you promise to, to do the whatever it is? She got me into a work study program, so I got credits for working. I had a full-time job. I was working at Circuit City. Every like certain amount of hours that I worked, I got a credit for school. 
And then she got me into a night class. And I ended up graduating. And um, that, that was a good program for me, at least. I mean, a lot of kids, I think a lot of the people that I grew up with would have succeeded in that program. But a lot of them got, you just get kicked out before you get there. I ended up coming to prison because I never stopped. I never stopped drinking and using drugs. If you're drinking and you're doing drugs, just drugs alone, you're probably in a bad atmosphere, you know what I mean? And you, I basically was around people that I would never be around and placing myself in situations that I would never be in. But I'm around prostitutes and crack fiends and cokeheads and it's just like, this is obviously gonna turn out bad. So I'm in prison for five years for criminal threatening. I didn't hurt anybody, I didn't rob anybody. You know, I just kinda got stuck in a bad situation and got sent to prison. Well, my plan while I'm here, I'm studying a couple different languages and studying, like self-studying psychology. My plan when I get out is to stop kids from getting this far a lot earlier. Like, I mean before high school, when this kid's drunk in middle school, we're gonna stop that before he goes to high school, because it's only gonna get worse. Nobody wants to say, yeah, I go to see a counselor, you know? But like, if I had after school, you know, five minute sessions with a person, you know, that I could connect with, you know? and we had a short conversation about how the day was and what I plan on for the rest of the day, right? And then leave, and then that's a person that I know I can go to in school and talk to when I'm really breaking apart. And if I'm not, you know, if I'm just not talking to them because I got this antisocial personality disorder, well, it's a person that I have to see at the end of the day. So that little intervention, I can either fall apart in front of them and they can help me figure out what I gotta do next. And if I had like, somebody before I got to that point to like just explain like you don't need to be cool like you don't need to just do things that everybody else is doing let's work on this let's work on that this is a problem so we're going to do that you're doing great in this area so let's keep focusing on that then obvious obviously it makes a difference I mean these aren't like hidden secrets like this is obviously going to make a difference but we just don't have I guess the manpower or time as a kid, even as an adult, like people just don't do things just to do them. They do them for a purpose, they do them for some type of reward. Right now, as I'm getting older, learning is a reward to me. To speak three languages, I think is a great thing, you know? And knowing, just knowing things that I didn't know or that I wouldn't know is a great thing, but then as a kid, it doesn't matter. I don't need to know this stuff. As a reward, I mean, it could be, could be anything, I guess. I couldn't say like student of the month, because if you're from where I'm from, you don't care about student of the month. It would have to be more than go to school because you're gonna need this later on. Go to school because you're gonna get paid if more if you have a diploma. It would have to be somehow the cool thing to do. It would have to be what people want to do, you know, like more like uh, influences, more older role models. Like if the older guys that uh, we were hanging out with were like, go to school, we, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, we were gonna go to school. It's finding what is gonna be important for each kid because there's not, there's not one person in the world who nothing matters to. Maybe not a lot, but not nothing.